Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Frank Duraffley, and welcome to our, for BNI members especially, this is a, a session on uh, from contact sphere to power team. How do we make that happen? We're going to talk about that today. Let me do a quick introduction in case you don't know me. My name is Frank Duraffley. I'm an executive director with BNI here in the Hudson Valley area. I've been in BNI for over 25 years and had this region for over 23 years. I've um, seen a lot of things happen with contact spheres and power teams over the year. Uh, the years, I should say, and I also see a lot, there's a lot of mix up between what do those two terms mean? Why do we have both of them? So we're going to clear all that up today and talk about this. This session is for both directors and members to really talk about how can you make the most out of the power teams that you have. So as we go forward, first what I'd like you to do is just a reminder, when you come on, do me a favor and just uh, put into the uh, into your post where you're watching from so we get an idea of who from around the world I think we've had people from India from Japan from Hong Kong uh, from Australia uh, from all throughout the United States uh, from all different places around the world we've had people it's great for people to see that and to know uh, what we have going on also if you can write that you're if you're a director or a member and write how long you've been a director or a member so we know that as well as I go through, I'm going to kind of do about 15, 20 minutes on this, and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to answer any questions that you have. So if you do me a favor, as you have questions, don't wait to the end, type them in, but type them in caps. That way it's easy for me to see that there's a question there and easier for me to read my glasses. You know, sometimes I can't read everything. So, so that'd be important to put that in there for me. And as we go along, if there's some things that I say that you think are great ideas, write them down. Hey, I love this. I love that. Let us know what you're getting out of this um, so other people can learn from that as well. All right. Uh, so let's jump right in from contact sphere to power team. What's the difference between a contact sphere and a power team? Okay. First, a contact sphere, uh, a contact sphere is theoretical. A power team is action oriented. Okay. What that means is a contact sphere is also not just a BNI term. We may use it in BNI, but it really means theoretically, what are those businesses that are related to you that could be referral sources for you and you could be referral sources for them. An example that I think is obvious to everybody is let's say I'm a real estate agent. Okay. Then we also have the attorney at those closings, the insurance person, the title insurance person, uh, the mortgage professional, the home inspector, all of those people are involved in the transaction of closing a home. They're a power team. They can refer to each other. There's also a secondary level of power team there, which might be the trades that are involved in getting the house ready to be sold, or once it's sold, they can come in and help fix the house to the way the new owners want it. So that's an example of what a contact sphere might be. Okay, but a contact sphere is not just, it's, and it's called spheres of influence. There's different terms that are used in all different industries. It's not just in BNI, but basically you have that theory. It's your, it's your, the theoretical group you want to put together. It's really your goal. Okay, it's really your strategy of how am I going to uh, put a group of people around me that we can help each other uh, with referrals theoretically. So what's the power team? A power team is the actual working of a contact sphere. The power team is a mindset and the power team is action based. So what I mean by that as a mindset is when people are together and they're thinking about, hey, this is a group of people that I want to work with. I want to be able to refer them business and I want to be able to get them to refer me business. Well, obviously the number one thing, as we always say, is trust and confidence. If we don't have trust and confidence in each other, we're not going to pass referrals in general in BNI, but especially in a power team, if we don't have trust and confidence, it's not going to happen. So it's really important that with those people in your power team, that may be the most important relationships to start building in your chapter and continually build in your chapter. Okay. These are people you want to treat like gold at all times, because again, they are people who are in your related profession and can really help you out. So you want to make sure that that power team is, is there and you have the mindset of giving to them, of educating and training them and learning from them and seeing what can I learn from them, but you have to educate them as well. So the number one thing about a power team is the mindset that I'm willing to work with these people and help make it go forward. Let me, I'm going to give you a kind of a quick example of a power team that I was in. This is actually before I got involved in BNI. So I'm going back almost 30 years ago. Before I was in BNI, 
Uh, I was in a, I used to, I don't have my just a consulting and training company, which I've done for over 25 or so years. So I do things like training, like sales training, customer service, management, leadership. Most of my focus today is on leadership, teamwork development, that type of thing. By the way, I was going after medium to large size corporations down in Westchester County um, and in New York City. And I, I met with, I started meeting with three other guys. Eventually it was four other guys. We met once a month for lunch and we got together and each of them now, we didn't have related industry, but we had related target market. I mean, we were all going after medium to large size companies. So I had a guy that sold like, you know, those big Xerox machines that are like $150,000. That's what he sold. And then I had another guy that did like HR and another person that did, I think it was, uh, it was phone systems, right? And so we have these different people and we got together every month. And what we did is we shared our basically our database with each other. We shared what sales calls we were going, what we were doing. We had a very productive meeting every month. And then during the month, we were in contact with each other because we we're helping each other get more sales. Do you know that with that, eventually four guys, those five people together, the four, the four of the people I was with, that I had to do absolutely nothing else for about four years, I think it was close to five years, nothing, and my business grew significantly because of four other people. Because we were a true power team for each other, and we were only meeting monthly. I think to myself, man, if we were meeting weekly, how much better could it have been? If we had the knowledge of BNI, how much better could this have been? But it worked with just three or four of us, three or four others in my team. That's what we want to see happen in all of our chapters. Directors need to help make this happen, but members need to have the mindset. So I'm going to talk a little today about how we make that happen. Now, the reason we have these two terms, contact sphere and power team, is because they're not the same. The contact sphere is your plan, right? Your strategy, your goal of what you want to achieve, and power team is the way to take the action and make it happen. I mentioned that earlier. So how do we make a contact sphere into a power team? Well, first we have to realize that our power team is our referral source. That's where we're going to get the majority of our business from. Assuming that your power team in your BNI chapter is working correctly, and that means about two thirds of the referrals that you're you're bringing into your chapter, you're getting, I'm sorry, from your chapter, should be coming from your power team. One third from everybody else in the chapter combined. Think about that. If you have a five or six or eight or 10 person power team, maybe a 30 or 40 person chapter, okay, that the majority of people in that power, the majority of referrals you're receiving are coming from the people in that power team. Everyone else in the chapter, not going to give you as much usually. Okay. Also the difference between a power team and a contact sphere is a contact sphere is theoretical. And here's the people that should help me. Now what will happen sometimes is your power team, you may also have somebody who's giving you is a great referral source that you never had listed in your contact sphere. Because in your contact sphere, you didn't see them, but now you're saying like, wow, this is a person that gets it. And all of a sudden you have a new type of power team member that theoretically really shouldn't be giving you business, but is. So a power team is what's actually happening in terms of making that go forward. Let me give you an example of what a power team can be. Let's use the example again of a real estate agent. So let's say I'm a real estate agent and let's say I have five other people in my power team. So I have a six person power team. And let's say I'm in a 36 person chapter. Well, if everything's working correctly, then theoretically, the people in that chapter, two thirds of their referrals should be coming possibly from each other in the chapter if it's working really well. One third from everyone else in the chapter combined. Now, why is that? Why is that one third of the chapter or you know, that the two, two thirds of the chapter is only gonna give you one third of the business you're gonna come in? because they're just not in your world. They don't have people coming to them on a regular basis looking for your product or service. So it's not, not on the top of their mind on a regular basis. But let's assume this for a second. I'm a real estate agent, okay? I'm getting the majority of my business, let's say from my sphere. But now I have 30 other people in the chapter. And this is why a larger chapter is very valuable. I have 30 other people in a chapter. And let's say those 30 other people Let's say they only give me one referral a year. Okay, they're not, they're not that good at getting referrals from me. So one referral a year from each of them. Okay, you know what? I know this chapter. And these people in this chapter, there's no way half of them are even going to give me one in a year. So let's cut that in half. 15 of them give me zero, not one single referral in a whole year. 
but the other 15 only give me one in a full year, right? So half of the chapter, not my power team, gives me nothing. The other half gives me only one. I'm a real estate agent. I end up getting 15 listings or 15 sales from the people not in my power team, the chapter. How am I doing in BNI? Pretty darn well. 15 sales or listings from my chapter from not the people in my power team. Okay, so one of the reasons that you want to have a larger chapter is that the odds of getting referrals go up because not everybody's going to give them to a regular basis. But a really important part of having the power team is they're going to give you, if it's an active power team, they're going to give you those referrals and make it happen. So you want to have a strong power team, but you want to continue to grow the chapter so your odds of getting business goes up. Okay, so let's talk about how do we start. Um, how do you start to make your power teams work? So I'm going to kind of give you a list of things of a way that we help make this happen. Okay, so number one, first you have to start with a strong power team. So let's define a power team. Okay, a, a one person power team is called a non-existent power team. Okay, you can't have a power team with one person. A two, three, four person power team, considered a weak power team. Okay, a five, six, seven person power team, a strong power team eight, nine, 10 or above, what we call a synergistic power team, right? Really powerful in the chapter in terms of doing that. So we have to look at those things. And we're we'll talking in a second about can a power team become too big? We'll talk about that in just a moment. So number one is you have to have a strong power team. So really at least six or seven people besides you and your power team, that makes a really strong power team and can help you grow your business. So that's number one. Number two, you then want to identify sub power teams if your power team gets bigger. So let's use the example of a business services power team. A lot of times chapters have very strong business services power teams, okay, where people who kind of help all different types of businesses in all different ways. And you can have in there people who are consultants and business coaches and uh, computer people and web designers and graphic designers and printers and, I mean, name it, right? There's so many different businesses that service uh, the business in the chapter that are in the business services power team. So now you can have 10, 15, 18 people in that one power team. Will a 15 or 18 person power team really work well together? Maybe, right? Sometimes it starts to get too big in terms of that. And I don't mean that the power team is too big, but the effectiveness of it. So what we have to do is not worry about the size of the power team, but, but also look at sub power teams. So within your, let's say that power team itself, the business services power team, let's say we have 15 people within that power team, okay? Now what we can do is say, well, what sub power team is this? For example, what people in this business services power team are related to marketing for businesses? Wait, we had the graphic designer, we had the web designer, we had the business consultant that does marketing stuff, we had um, the SEO guy, we had uh, the printer, all of them are related, I'm sure there's more, are related to marketing for a business. So now I have a sub business services power team that's just marketing. I may have a sub power team that's also about technology. I may have a sub power team that's also about management or leadership in a business, different things along those lines. So we look at our power teams and the size of our power team, we have to look at sometimes part of makes the power team even stronger is that mini power team, that sub one that may only be two or three or four people and they can be up doing business. And what may end up happening is my, I may end up being, besides in multiple power teams in the chapter, I could be in multiple sub power teams. So in my business circle, well, I'm part of the marketing one, but wait a minute, I also work with management in a company. So all of a sudden I have different, because I can work with these people on my power team, but in different ways. We all have our different specialties, so we can work even better together. So look at your, your power team itself, and then look at sub power teams. Number three, arrange a monthly meeting either in person or through a video chat, okay? In person, I think, is usually best, but again, sometimes it's hard for people to do that. I wouldn't do a conference call, i do a video chat, like a Zoom or something along those lines where you can see each other. So you make it more of a real meeting, but you have a monthly date, so every, you know, once a month, the fourth Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m., we're gonna have our power team meeting. And everybody's gotta be there to really make this work. So set, set a time monthly to meet. OK, have a structured and productive meeting agenda. You know, that's really important that when the power teams get together, and what we've done in our in our region of BNI is we've put together power team agendas for people in our region. So when they get together, we give them the agenda to work on. 
because this hat you again this is a business meeting it's not just a call so they want to have a strict agenda that they can go through to make this very productive for each other so they can they can actually produce results and that's what we're looking for okay uh, number five run a meeting don't have a call run a meeting don't have a call okay it's really important that this is a structured business meeting like our regular BNI meeting is, but it's structured in a different way. It's about all of us participating and giving and helping each other um, for our power team and what we're doing. Okay, so don't just make this a call talking and shooting the breeze. This is a business meeting and you have to have an agenda to put together to make that happen. Now, if you're a member and saying, I want to do this, then maybe you go to your director and they'll have power team agendas for you. If you're if you're a director and you're saying, geez, we need to kind of put together help put together these agendas for people, then sit down with your director team and help put that together. There's things that are out there that can help really make you do that. Okay. Number where am I? Number six. Number six. Make a commitment to making a commitment uh, to each other for results. Okay. You've got to make that commitment of not just being there, but in the meeting. Okay, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna talk about certain things. We're gonna go through more detail on that in a second. You're gonna go through what I'm what we're trying to accomplish, what type of sales that you want, who are you looking to meet? But you've got to follow through with that during the month. This is what makes it a power team. What makes it a power team is that we take actions for each other. We make this happen. And if you're doing this, I'm telling you, if your power team's working, you may never and never have to do anything else again. B and I and your power team can really make the difference for you. Okay? Number seven. Report on results uh, and follow up each month. So each month you get together, right? You've got to kind of keep notes on, on who you said you were going to do something for, who's going to do something for you. You're working together during the month. When you get together, make the first part of the call with the people in the power team saying, okay, um, what happened in the last month? So Frank, with the people, uh, you said you were going to do certain things. Tell us what happened with those. So the people that I said I was going to introduce people to or I was going to help work on lists for or whatever it might be, did I do those things? The people that did stuff for me, did they do stuff for me? Let's make sure we're holding each other accountable. Look, we're not all going to be able to follow through on everything we promise every month. I like to say we are, but we all get really busy. But this is about sales. This is about getting results. So if you're not going to focus on this, what are you going to focus on? Even though you can't follow through on everything, at least be honest about it, be upfront, and work hard for each other to make it happen. Okay? And then I'm at number eight, hold each other accountable. It's really important as a power team that you hold each other accountable and, hey, guys, are we making this work? What's going to happen? This is a business meeting. This isn't just a fun call. We are here to make, to make uh, success for each other. Your BNI chapter measures its success by the money that's made by the members in the chapter. Your power team should be the same. You guys should be keeping track of the money that you're making for each other. Right? Track your power team. How productive is your power team? How cool would it be that if in a chapter, besides the number that the chapter is going for, a million dollars, two million dollars a year for the members, and we report that, what if each power team ended up doing a financial report? Here's what we produce in our power team this year for each other. It'll get other power teams more motivated to start to work together. And if you have those numbers for your power team, how much easier do you think it's going to be to invite people to BNI to become a member and become part of your power team? When you guys have numbers and saying, well, the five of us, we've passed to each other $300,000 worth of business in the last four months. I want to be part of that team. Makes it really powerful to get people in, to be part of your team and be part of your BNI chapter. And number eight, repeat everything above <laughs> okay so everything we just talked about you've got to get that team together you got to be working together you got to have a strict agenda you got to make this work and then you've got to do it over and over again okay now it'd be great if you could do it every two weeks i know that's really hard for people so i recommend every month if you decide it's working well think about it going every two weeks think of how much more productive it would be i can tell you that when i did it monthly if we were able to do that weekly or every other week we would have dramatically increased the amount of business that we did for each other but we didn't think about it back then because we didn't have the bni knowledge right so do that with your power team that's the way to basically get it started so in a meeting what should we be focused on what are the things we should talk about so I'm going to give you another list of 11 things that you can focus on in this meeting. Okay, 11 things. Number one, sales call you made in the last three months. So 
first thing you do is you go around and you say, okay, in the last three, bring to the meeting this, this month, bring to the meeting sales calls that you made in the last three months. Doesn't mean you sold to people, but you went on the sales calls. Let me see who you've been calling on in the last three months because maybe some of the people you called on, I know somebody there, maybe that sale's not done yet if you didn't get it. Maybe I can help you get in there. Or if you're going to see somebody and the process is still going on, maybe I can put in a good word for you. Or maybe you have somebody I want to get into. If I share my list, you may go, hey, Frank, I've been trying to get in there too. Maybe I sold them. So that's why if we're sharing our lists with each other, we can help each other make more sales. Number two, um, sales calls you have planned for the next month. So not who I've called, but who I'm going to be calling on in this next month or 60 days, depending how what your business is and how far ahead you plan that. Share who you're planning on going after. Number three, past client list. And you can start that with six months, a year, or three years. And the reason I say that is because it depends on your type of business. Some people make a lot of sales calls, a lot of sales in terms of numbers. Some are less because they're bigger ticket items. So it may make sense to say, let's start with six months, the, your client list in the last six months you brought on, or a year, or whatever it might be. Now, for some of you that may be confidential, you can't do that, but um, it's one way to start. Next one, number four, dream referrals. Talk about your dream referral. What would be your ultimate referral, your dream referral? And try to name the actual business you want that dream referrals for. Let the people in your group help come up with that. Maybe you have a dream referral, but you really don't know who it's going to be. That chapter, of that chapter, that power team may be able to help you define who you're going after. But the idea is that we're being creative with each other. We're helping each other get our dream referrals. You never know who somebody knows. Share your dream referral. Number five, specific companies you want to get into, but with the names of the businesses, the, per the person's position, and the person's name. Be as specific as you can. What are companies you want to get into? Okay, make that specific just like you're supposed to in your weekly presentation. Okay, number six, referral source partners you want outside the chapter uh, and be specific. So there's people in the chat that are in your power team right now, but the people that aren't in your power team, what other referral partners do you want on the outside? They may not ever join BNI or be part of your power team, but you like to have them as referral partners. In fact, sometimes it's, you know, like I'm a mortgage person. I have a, I have a, um, a real estate in my, agent in my chapter. I'm going to try and give all my business to, but I need to have a relationship with other real estate agents. So if I can meet other real estate agents, that's fine. They can use me. I may not be referring them, but they can use me. I can do a great service for them. So who are those people that you want as well? Um, your target list for next year, right? Who is your target list uh, for the next year? So maybe you're not making the calls now, but you're starting to plan six months, 12 months ahead. Here's the businesses we're really starting to look ahead on and really get focused on. Put that target list out there because between a couple of you, you may be able to develop strategies of how you can help make that happen, okay? Um, Sales you want to have closed four to six months from now. So not right now, not in the next 90 days, but what sales do you want to have closed in four to six months from now? Start planning ahead. What I talk about is working on tomorrow's money versus today's money. I think we've had that conversation before, but you want to start working on tomorrow's money. So in 90, 120 days, you start having a good percentage of your sales done so you can keep working ahead. Okay. The next one, obviously, sales you need to close now in the next 30, 60, 90 days. Bring that list. What are the sales that I need now? How do I focus on that? So depending now in your business could mean 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on what you sell and how you sell. Okay. Number 10, synergies of combining services to present bigger and better companies. So sometimes you're, you're selling your product or service and you don't want to get to certain companies. You know, my competition goes there. They offer more than I do. Well, the people in your power team may all of a sudden give you an edge up on something your competitor doesn't have, or you're better than your competitor because you're separate companies. You can come in and offer things together. So you can create synergies between each other, and you can go in and present things that other companies may not be able to do. So think about how you can partner together to help go and get the same type of clients. And number 11, uh, what, would make, uh, what would make me better? So ask your people in your power team, what would make me better, my business better, how I present better, anything along those lines? You want feedback. You want feedback from your team. And I mean honest, brutally honest feedback. Brutally doesn't mean mean, just means being honest. But brutally honest feedback so those people can help you get better. This is how you can make a power team work. First, you have to get a power team, six or seven other people at a minimum in your chapter. Look at what sub-power teams that you have. 
okay? Then start to run your meeting on that monthly or every other week basis. Get together, go through how to make it, how to make it the agenda that I gave you. Okay, that's a that's just a quick rough agenda. And these are just 12 different topic matters you can talk about. Literally, this could be for 12 different meetings. Don't try to do them all in one meeting. Take one at a time, give everybody time to sit together. And by the way, if you have a really productive power team meeting, in my opinion, it's gonna be a couple hours long. But you're gonna walk out of there with potential and business that you never thought you'd have before, okay? So what I wanna do now is see what questions that you have and answer any questions that you do have. Um, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and write down the one best idea you got out of today. So let me go through and see what questions we might have as I'm going through this here. I know I talked kind of quick. I was trying to get a lot in, so we'll kind of go from there. All right. Questions that you have. Hey, Trevor. <laughs> here we go, people. Lance, how are you, man? Okay. Right. Trying to see questions. Okay, so how do you get a great question? How do I, I want my power team to work, but how do I get the other people in my power team to put that time aside and make it happen? Well, it really comes down to try and put a first meeting together, but you have to make it a great first meeting. And this is why, especially as members, I think it's important to include your director or if you have an ambassador, include both of them in this. Have your directors get involved. Have them help you run that first meeting. Because if we can do that as directors, if we can go and get them to start working on that, now what happens is as a director, I've created more value for the member and the members see so much more value in doing this and they're getting greater results, which means as they get greater results, as they build their business, they're going to be able to give more business in the chapter. Okay. That's what's so valuable about this. I honestly believe that if we can put power teams together and make them work, we're bringing referrals to a different level. We talk about, Ivan and I, we talked in one of the past videos, we talked about you know, the difference between finding, recognizing versus developing referrals. Recognizing is the bread and butter of BNI. We all do that or should be doing that for each other right, on a weekly basis. We're trying to recognize business for each other and make those introductions. But developing business for each other, developing referrals is about creating something from nothing. That's really what your power team's about. Your power team's about how do I really help create business for these people across from me? How do I work my network to get these people in there? That's really what we want to see happen. You know, one of the short stories, I'll, I'll finish with this story. I had um, a friend years ago who uh, had a travel agency and he's actually down in Westchester County. He did big commercial travel and he said to me, we we're just talking on the phone and he said, hey Frank, did I tell you that um, we were talking, he said, oh, did you see yesterday, it was a Tuesday, he said, yesterday, did you see that the New York Yankees closed all their bidding for um, their travel? I was like, no, I, I didn't know that. And he just goes, yeah, they closed, we were so bummed out because that's the type of travel we do. And I said, oh, that's too bad. We talked a little bit more and said, okay, man, I told him, I'll probably be down in a couple of weeks, we'll do some lunch. Great, bye, hung up the phone. He didn't ask me for anything, okay, we were just having a conversation. But I thought to myself after, who do I know that knows somebody at the New York Yankees? So I call my friend John, okay, I'm making up names now I'm to protect the innocent. I call my friend John, I said, John, didn't you say you knew somebody who worked at the Yankees? He said, well, yeah, my fiance, I'm sorry, my, uh, my cousin, her fiance works at the Yankees. And I said, look, I got this friend of mine and I started telling him about my friend who he didn't know. So basically I kind of was selling my friend to him who has a travel agency, so he would introduce me to his cousin. So we did a conference call with his cousin, got her on the phone. We talked, he introduced me to her. I tell her the whole story. She says, well, look, I'm happy to put you in, in touch with Phil, who her, her, is her fiance. So I contact Phil and I said, hey, Phil. And I kind of explained the whole story to him. And Phil says, oh, this is great, but I'm not the guy to talk to. You need to talk to Dave. So she puts me to the guy in the Yankees. Okay. That's the guy that makes this decision. So I talked to Dave and I said, say, hey, Dave, you know, and I told him the whole story. And in the end, Dave says, well, Frank, obviously, because you know Phil, which I didn't know Phil, but he thought I did. He said, tell you what, you tell your friend if he gets his bid in here by 5 p.m. today, we'll accept a bid. Doesn't mean he has the job, but we'll accept a bid. And we'll, and we'll look at it like all the others. I said, fantastic. Thank you so much. Call my friends back. 45 minutes later, I call him back and I said, got you a bid at the Yankees. He's like, what are you talking about? So I just told, I told him that story, but I told him the longer version of that story and made it pretty painful what I did for him. And uh, I told him that the long version of that story and he was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I said, no, no shh, you have 45 minutes to finish the proposal, go get it done. So he did and he got it in and they accepted the bid. Now he didn't get the job that year, 
But now he had a relationship with the Yankees that he could start to bid on every year. Why would I do that for him? Because I have incredible trust and confidence in him. I knew he'd do a great job for him. I wanted to help him out. And in the end, if he got the gig, now I know somebody at the Yankees. In the end, if I want to look at it from a selfish standpoint, I want to work my network for him because eventually I'd like him to work his network for me. I'd like to see who might he know that knows somebody and get me in there. That's what BNI is about. That's what power teams are about. It's not about compound referrals, but about complex referrals when we work our networks for each other. Hey, everybody. Hope you got some great value out of this today. Uh, again, if you could do me a favor, what was the one best idea you got out of today? Please write that in the post on the side so that way we have it there. Um, they're going to be taking these and posting them on BNI University, so you'll be seeing this soon. If there's anything else I can help you with, please let me know, and we'll be doing our next uh, live Facebook for BNI in about two weeks. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day, everybody.